Hey guys, Rob Dabney here with ADV Pulse. And today we are at the press intro for the 2022 Desert X, which is Ducati's most off-road focused adventure bike yet. It was 2019 when Ducati first released the Desert X prototype to the public at ICMA, and it was based on a design that paid homage to the Paris Dakar bikes from the 80s and 90s, in particular the Kajiva Elephant, which was Ducati powered. And they built it on the Scrambler 1100 platform. That original prototype design, it was really good at turning heads, but it really wasn't going to change minds about Ducati's reputation for off-road bikes, which you know, they really have more of a on-road sport bike reputation. So this was a special opportunity for Ducati to do something unique and show that they can produce a really fantastic off-road bike as well. So they decided instead of using the original Scrambler platform, they would just throw that plan out the window and they would go with an all new chassis, everything new, except for the engine, which they used from the Multistrada V2. Really tried and true motor that has been around for a long time. Makes great power, lots of character. Scotty engineers also gave it a 21 inch front and 18 inch rear wheel combo, which is also unique for Ducati. Along with the wheel set, they also gave it more of a trail low gearing in first and second gear. And then you still have the normal gearing of that Testostrata motor for uh, three through six. So it's still great at cruising on the highway as well. But that just gives you that extra pop down low and that extra power to sort of handle uh, slow speed trail riding. It also comes with a long travel suspension and it's got a, a nice large tank, 5.5 gallons. Basically that'll take you to 200 miles, no problem. In addition, you can add an auxiliary tank to go on the rear. Uh, we learn more about how that system works today. And basically once you've got enough space in your main tank, you can hit a little button in the uh, rear tank and tell it to refill the front tank. And it'll basically just push all that fuel up to, up to the front. So you don't have a bunch of issues with constantly switching back and forth with tanks. It's sort of a one button push deal and all your extra fuel capacity is moved up to the front of the tank and you have a nice consistent handling. As you'd expect from Ducati, the bike received a full suite of state-of-the-art rider aid. You've got a five inch TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity. There's cruise control, an up-down quick shifter, lean angle sensitive four mode ABS, six different ride modes. Basically four of those ride modes are street modes and then you've got two off-road modes. The two off-road modes are enduro, which is more of a more mellow off-road ride setting for people who are maybe just trying to cruise or newer to off-road riding. And then you've got the rally mode, which is really just full power kind of mode for guys who have a lot of experience off-road. It comes with the Pirelli Scorpion tires, the STR model, but they have two other tire choices. You can get the Scorpion rallies, which are a little more aggressive, or there's another uh, more street oriented uh, option you can get if you're gonna be riding more on street. So how does it ride? Well, it's gonna get out on the street right away. We you know, got a feel for the ergos and the seat height is reasonable at 34.4 inches. At my height, six foot two, it's perfectly fine. I can flat foot it. The uh, sit down position, there's a you know a little bit of a bend in the knee for me as a taller rider, but I would say that I never really felt discomfort throughout the day with that slightly cramped, I would say, position. Uh, it does come with a tall seat, which I didn't get to try out yet, but you can get a tall seat to replace this one or a low seat. As far as the bars, it really felt good. Sometimes you feel like the bars are a little too high when you sit down and when they try to get the seat too low, but everything, was really well thought out with this bike in terms of the ergos for the street. It's got a nice windscreen. It basically throws the wind up over your head. And even at my height, I didn't have any, you know, buffeting on my visor, even though I was wearing a dirt helmet. Windscreen, it's not adjustable though. So depending on how tall you are, or short you are, you may have some different experiences with it. Also the seat, it's somewhat firm. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's, it's a firm seat. So it doesn't have that squishy feel that can sometimes irritate you after a while. This motor, it's super smooth. I didn't feel any tingling in the bars or anything like that in any of the gears. So it's a great cruiser if you want to jump on the highway. Uh, 84, 85 degrees here. And uh, don't feel any noticeable heat coming off the engine. And we've been here in traffic for a while. 
<laughs> What's she doing? She wants to switch bike? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no noticeable buzz in the pegs either, even though we didn't ride with the uh, rubber inserts. Also, there's an adjustable brake lever that allows you to flip it over if you want to have more space for your foot or less space for your foot. So if you're doing a lot of stand-up riding, you might want to twist that up so that it's a little bit higher and it makes it easier to reach it when you're standing. We did get to wind this bike out a bit on some of these mountain roads and had some fun in the twisties. So uh, a really nice motor. It's very linear power curve, totally flat. There's no uh, wait for it moments when the power comes on and it just all the way through the rpm range up to 10,000 rpms redline it's just got tons of power and torque it's not as overwhelmingly powerful as something in the 1200 cc class that just has that hyperspeed mode but it's uh, got plenty of character and acceleration to just keep you having fun all day on this bike some of these adventure bikes they tend to try to get the pegs a little lower to get more leg room but with this bike it's a tall bike uh, relatively speaking and you gotta lead it over pretty far to scrape the pegs it's got tons of ground clearance so you can really just lean it over and you don't have to costly hang off the bike. So I like that. It likes to be ridden aggressively and the harder you turn that throttle, it just responds well to that kind of riding style. So if you like to go fast in the twisties, it's a Ducati. It's, you're getting what you would expect. You know, even with the 21 inch, 18 inch wheel set, I really didn't feel like I was limited and you could still go riding with your sport bike buddies if you're a good rider and you're not gonna be hard, very far behind them. The ride modes for the street are sport, touring, urban, and wet. So I played around with all those, kind of gets what you'd expect. The sport mode is what I spent most of the time in and it just gives you the full power, full throttle response. But I did try out the urban and the wet modes just to see uh, how it felt. And it drops the horsepower down and the, gives you a really smooth, just pussycat throttle response. So if you, or riding with a passenger or riding in the wet or you know you're still sort of a new rider you know you can put it in that mode and this thing just mellows out tremendously so once we got it off-road the ergos work really well this bike likes standing up or sitting down off-road some bikes harder to get up farther on the tank and over the bars because they have such a long tank but this bike, since it's a fairly short tank, you can really you know, stand up over the bars and sit up forward over the bars. And that gives you just that extra stability over the front end. You've got wide platform foot pegs stock. The bar height, maybe, you know, if you're a taller rider like me, you might want to roll the bars forward just a tad. But overall, I felt like it was in the right range for an adventure bike. It also comes with a steering dampener. So that really helps out with the steering and just giving it more stability. As far as the suspension, the first trail we got on, it had some big water bar jumps and immediately I was a little bit disappointed because it was bottoming out and I was just getting started on the bike and I was like, hmm, maybe it's not gonna be as good as I hoped. But as soon as we came into a, a break, the uh, technicians did a little uh, adjustment. They had warned me before that they had just set it up standard and that if I wanted it to be adjusted, uh, that they could do that on the trail. So they added a little bit of preload, a little bit of uh, damping, and it totally changed the handling of the bike. I was impressed with how much better it rode after that. It could probably use maybe just an extra half inch of travel, I would prefer. But other than that, I mean, you can ride this thing very hard and it's a very high quality suspension that can take some abuse for sure. So I really like that about this bike. It's got a nice dirt bike steering head angle and it's got a long wheelbase. So whatever secret sauce that they put into this bike, it results in a front suspension that has a lot of confidence in rough terrain for a bike that's this size. As I mentioned, it has a steering dampener stock and that really helps just give the bike some extra stability. There was a couple times when that front end got lofted over one of those water bars or coming out of a turn and the front end gets a little light and you could feel it just sort of calm down that steering if it started to shake a little bit. I just with this nice steering dampener, it was adjustable, but this bike just has so much front end confidence that you can ride it hard, get it into softer terrain. And even with this not so aggressive dual sport tire, it still has lots of uh, margin for error and it's got good recoverability. 
So if you do start to slip, it's not like a top heavy bike that it's just gonna have that point of no return and it's gonna go over. If you're trying to turn this <laughs> around in the dirt on rough, loose, uneven terrain, it, it can get leaned over pretty far and you can easily pull it back up. Somehow they've got all the centralized mass like down low. It doesn't have that top heavy feel and that really translates on the trail too for this slower technical type of riding. The ability to just have that uh, confidence that if it does start to tuck the front that you can pull it back, that's huge on a bike like this. Uh, especially, you know, when you're dealing with riding in an adventure setting far away from home, one little miss up can ruin the whole trip that you've been planning for months. Playing around with the modes on this bike, with the off-road settings, it has the enduro mode, which takes away a lot of the bite from the, from the throttle response and lowers the power. That's a really nice mode for some of the soft terrain that we were riding today. We had some hill climbs going up the ski resort and it was getting steeper and steeper and it was rocky and soft, loose dirt. And having it in that enduro mode, it just very tractable power didn't slide out at all and you could just kind of go I felt like it was going I could go faster in that mode than if I just had full power switching it over to rally mode it just starts sliding around a lot and you have to be very conscious of how much throttle you're giving it and be on top of it and really think about it more than you need to but with the enduro mode just let the computer think and let the computer handle it and uh you know I would I would go as far as to say that if I was going to be racing up, up that hill I'd be a lot faster in enduro mode than I would be in rally mode. So a couple things that stood out to me that were, um, I guess, things that I didn't like as much, but not big problems. They're just little little quirks, I guess you could say. They, they changed the gearing on first and second gear to make it more of a trail gearing, which is great for off-road riders. But I did notice when we were cruising around town that when you're getting into that higher RPM of second gear, and you feel like it'd be more comfortable to switch to third, there's a big gap there and third wants to bog a little bit. So I kind of felt like in that 25 to 35 mile an hour range, there's a gap there between those two gears and you're kind of like switching back and forth. So just a little uh, quirk there, I guess you could say. Uh, but if you're riding this bike off road, you're probably gonna be much more happier about that lower gearing and how well it's gonna protect your clutch from burning up too. The other thing that stood out to me that uh, was a little hard to get used to. Off-road was the rear brake. It, it does have a tendency to lock up a little bit. It's got a pretty large disc back there and these are you know pretty street oriented, high performance brakes. The front brake was great, great feel. I didn't have any problems with it. It's got the monoblock, you know, high performance brake package that you would get on their sport bikes basically and did very well in loose terrain. Even with ABS off, it had very good feel. But the rear, I did find myself locking it up a lot, but it's just one of those things that if you own this bike, you kind of get used to it and adjust how much pressure you're putting on that rear brake. The thing that really stood out to me about this bike is the, the bike just handles in a way that gives you confidence to take it to more extreme terrain compared to sort of like the V4 Multistrada. You know, you definitely get into more technical terrain. It starts to warn you that, hey, it is maybe built for that. But this bike, it's like, hey, keep going. And so as the day progressed, my confidence with the bike progressed. And by the end of the day, I was just feeling completely free to try things and do more aggressive type of riding. The thing I really like is the way that it reacts to aggressive riding. The harder I pushed it, the better the suspension seemed to feel, the better it handled. The bike would just cut through the crud and cut through rocks. And it's just it feels like a bike that someone who's an experienced off-road rider is really gonna enjoy. But at the same time, you've got all the ride modes to really turn it into a, a milder, mannered bike and it's a very plus suspension over the rocks even though it's got a good hold up and a, a fairly stiff suspension so a good range there but i think the aggressive off-road riders are really going to appreciate this bike and that's something not expected from ducati i would say you know ducati finally has a bike that's a real contender with the other off-road focused adventure bikes in the market so this is really more going to be competing with the norden 901 the 890R and the Tiger 900. And as far as the suspension, you know, it's it's not quite on par with like an 890R. And I would say it's not as good as the Touareg suspension in terms of bump absorption. But as far as the feel it gives you, it's definitely on par with those bikes. Much better than the T7 and also the Norton in terms of bump absorption. It's really gonna depend on, you know, price and 
package and you know all the different options that people are looking for but again this is going to be a real contender in that category and finally you know ducati can say they can go head to head with those bikes so the 2022 ducati desert x is already shipping to showroom floors with an msrp starting at 17095 and if you want more information on this bike you can check out our full review on advpulse.com and thanks for watching <laughs>